So um, before I get started today on this video, I wanted to just throw this out there. I'm thinking about doing a Q&A. So if you have any questions or anything that you want to know, please drop that information into the comment section. I'm going to give it like a week or so, and then I'm going to see what we have. I will pick out the most frequently asked or however many I can get, and uh, we'll do a Q&A. <laughs> So today's video I'm going to be doing upon request. Um, someone asked me to do, a couple people actually, had asked me to do a cage liner tutorial video using U-Haul padding or U-Haul fabric. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, this is going to be similar, the first couple parts will be very similar to my regular cage liner tutorial that I have up, but this one is going to be a little different in that these liners will not be done in a pillowcase style. And the reason that I would opt not to do that is because um, by doing them in a pillowcase style, you would allow your animal access to the U-Haul itself, the fabric itself. And it's not like fleece. And I don't know, I'm sure a lot of you know what the U-Haul padding looks like, but if you don't, or what it feels like, but if you don't, for me, I could totally see my ferrets, if they had access to that, just like <laughs> clawing at it or, or wanting to dig at it. It just seems like that type of material to me. So um, I'm gonna do these more like a pad that sits on top of the pans themselves. So without further ado, let's get started. If you like this video, please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. I do post new videos every week. They're not all tutorials. It's all kinds of stuff. It's 99.9% .9 of the time ferret or um, small animal related. On occasion, it is fish related. And some of you may know I have a soft spot for my fish. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's do it. What you're gonna need is your sewing machine. You're gonna need some fleece. Um, you're gonna need some pins, scissors, I mean ruler and scissors, and some U-Haul furniture pads. You can pick this up at your local local store. I think it's like eight bucks or something. Um, it wasn't very expensive and it should do a whole set of cage liners. Okay, so I just wanted to add some side notes before we begin. I'm not gonna do a full set of cage liners. I'm just gonna do the pans for the top of a Critter or Ferret Nation. Um, I do wanna say that it may be important that you use a walking foot if you have one for this project. Um, sewing through two layers of fleece and then U-Haul fabric in addition to that all together is a lot on your machine and it may be more help it may be helpful or more helpful to have a walking foot if you don't it's okay um, it probably would be fine without a walking foot for those of you who don't know this is a walking foot it looks kind of like this um, and I'll put a picture up so it really helps hold your fabric in place and it also just does well with kind of the thick fabric that we're using for this project and with it being so many layers it'll help it not to slip um most machines they don't come with a walking foot but you can purchase them i don't believe they're overly expensive so if you're not comfortable or your machine doesn't seem like it can handle sewing through these three layers all at one time you could um not add the U-Haul until the end and then just hand sewing the corners like a little stitch uh, maybe in each corner just to hold your U-Haul um, fabric in place. Um, the reason that I chose to sew the U-Haul fabric to the fleece itself directly is because it stops it from shifting. So if I put the U-Haul fabric in the liner and then I don't kind of connect it to the fleece, I feel that when you wash it or if you were to dry it, it would bunch up and it just may be difficult to manage after um, it's been through a cycle of wash. Also, when you're done, you're gonna to wanna to change your sewing machine needle because um, I think that this fabric will definitely dull it. So you're gonna to want to lay your fabric out, right sides together, and you're gonna to wanna to either go get your pans from your cage or you can create a template. I have a template. If you want this to be facing up, then you need to have this on top and your pan needs to be cut out upside down. Um, and I will show you from my other video how that works. But for the top pan cover, or the top, top pan liner, the one that has like the L kind of shape, you're gonna wanna make sure the fabric that has the design that you want showing is the fabric that's on top. Also, if you're tracing your pan liner directly from your cage, that you flip that pan liner upside down. And the reason that you wanna do that is because when you go to turn your liners after sewing right sides out, um, if you don't have the pan liner upside down or you don't have that fabric on the top, it will 
come out backwards and then you will unfortunately have to put the solid side or the side without a pattern or the side without the pattern that you wanted will be the side that you see when you open your cage. Okay, so you got this. You're gonna trace this or your pan, either one. This is what your top pan um, pattern should look like. And what I recommend you do is that you kind of cut and pin at the same time. So now we're gonna cut this out. Okay, so next you're gonna to need to cut a piece of U-Haul. And you're gonna want it a little bit smaller than this, so. side that's going to be facing up on my cage I have down and my right sides are together. Now I'm going to take my U-Haul fabric and I'm going to put it on there. Now you're going to want to kind of pin everything in place and I would recommend that you pin this really well. Um, this fabric slides. You're gonna sew all the way around, but you're not gonna sew here. So leave this open, don't sew. Okay, so now that you've done that, now you may not have caught all of the um, U-Haul fabric in the sewing machine, but that's okay because you just wanted to catch enough to hold it in place so that it didn't bunch up when you go to wash it. I would trim off any excess fabric if it was me. Um, I would just get rid of it. You're gonna put your hand in between the two fleeces and you're gonna turn this right side out. Okay, so now you have this and um, there's a space here. So this should look like this. You're gonna wanna roll your fleece under both of them. Basically what we're gonna, if you have to cut this a little, it's okay, you can, you're not gonna miss this. So we're just gonna give this a little cut. You're gonna roll these together like this so that we can finish the seam. The seam should look like this. You should have folded this part in where they're folded up on each other. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna top stitch all the way around. We're gonna close, we wanna make sure that you close this off. So now everything should be closed up. Um, you should, and the reason that I top, and you don't have to top stitch all the way around, that's absolutely optional. The one thing that you do have to do is stitch down here. So now you're just gonna wanna cut off your strings like this, and you should have this. And basically, you should also, um, and then we're, you would do the same thing for the other pans as well. So that's how that would work. And to do your little pan, you would basically do the same thing. So, what you would do is you're gonna trace this just like you did. So next, you're gonna get your piece of U-Haul. Put 
your PC you hold down. We can trim it up at the end, it's okay. And we're just gonna pin. excess fabric here so we're just going to cut that off and you're going to turn it with the two fleeces right sides out and you should have something like this okay we're going to do the same thing we're going to trim this so we give us some room to fold in this like this and you're gonna flip this like this and we can just, um, these are washable and all of that. So I'm gonna go test them out in my cage and we'll see what it looks like. <laughs> 